Hey everyone, Ryan Noonan here, Betsperts Golf, and we have once again partnered with our friends over at Run Your Pool for this week's 105th PGA Championship. Today I am joined by the one and only Paige Sporadic. Paige, I think everyone's going to be excited about this. Why don't you tell everyone what's at stake here with uh, Run Your Pool and Swag? Yeah, so it is uh, free to enter. You guys already know you pick six golfers, and then it's the lowest total score wins and top three winners are going to get a swag putter. You guys haven't heard of swag. They are one of the coolest companies in golf right now. They make sick head covers and even better putters. So this is a really great prize. It only takes a minute to enter. So, I mean, why not? Right? Listen, I went on a golf trip recently, Paige. My game, I want to say had everything, including swag, but no putting. So I am very much interested in competing here and winning because I have a very old putter that I regrips and makes me feel like it's a brand new putter. It's a terrible old putter. I need a new one. So I'm excited to check out. And I, you know, since we've partnered here, I've gone digging a little bit and these spy putters are pretty sweet and people seem to absolutely love them. So that speaks volumes. You know, in the golf space, there's just a, a ton of different options out there. So pretty excited to check that out. And like Paige said, super easy. It's free. It's going to take you probably like tips to tails, 90 seconds to do this entire thing. Run your pool. You can find the link in our show notes. It might be floating around here. Uh, there might be a button there. Uh, or you can go on to Paige's Twitter account. You can find us over at Betsports Golf as well. Easy link to join. Like she said, six golfers. Uh, they're all tiered up based off of the world golf rankings. You simply pick your six and uh, there you go. You're off and running. PGA Championship page, um, again, this course, we haven't seen Oak Hill since like 2013. And from all reports, it looks nothing like back when Jason Duffner won a while ago. All the trees have been removed, rebunkering, the greens have been changed up. There's a lot of different angles, visibility, uh, lines that have changed. It looks like from all accounts, it's beautiful. No one's played there in quite a while. They've been basically keeping all the members off too. But distance is going to be a major factor too. What are some of the early takeaways that you've had from uh, what's going on over at Oak Hill? Yeah, so I played Oak Hill a couple of years ago, and it is an absolute beast of a golf course. I remember this was just normal play, and if you missed a fairway just this far off, it took us 10 minutes to find the golf ball, if you <sighs> even found it. The rough is thick with as many seas as you can add. I mean, it is absolutely brutal. It plays long. It is a difficult golf course, but it's a fair golf course too. And that's why I really like, it's a very interesting layout. It's a beautiful layout, a beautiful course, but yeah, it's going to eat some of these guys alive. You're looking at the long players, great ball strikers this week. Yeah, they're talking about just there's going to be some forced layups because of creeks and different things like that. You might just have no choice but to maybe take your medicine sometimes and even if you're, say, 175, 200 yards out, it might be a wedge to get yourself back onto the short stuff uh, because of how thick it is. So uh, it'd be lovely to play with spotters as well. I always feel like that would make life a little bit easier, but yeah. uh, not in this existence for this guy here for sure. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go into your picks here a little bit. And I think when you have kind of a course that we don't see in the normal rotation, we have some reports based off of what's going on on the course, your experience on the course as well. Sometimes I think it's good to kind of stay with a golfer archetype when you're looking to build here, because if you're right, well, you in this instance, you're going to have six options to be correct with the right type of build. Um, and it looks like based off of your picks here, we're leaning on distance being a, a massive factor. Now, the first tier is always really difficult to pick, right? Because it's loaded with all the guys that we think are really viable to win this golf tournament. Uh, but you can be started with your first pick here. Yeah, so I went with, no surprises here, John Rahm. And, you know, I think everyone kind of goes back and forth between Scotty Scheffler or John Rahm. And John just has the complete game. Obviously, both of them are really great ball strikers. But what sets John apart from Scotty is putting. And we saw that at the Masters. John Rahm is so mentally tough, and that's why he plays so well in majors and again throwing it back to augusta when we were looking at horrible weather conditions john rom played some amazing golf and we know that you're gonna have to grind it out and i, I he's he's a favorite i mean he's always going to be a favorite world number one you got to go with john rom <laughs> He won the Masters by four shots and like three putted the first hole to start himself off with a double. Like he just, he right now just feels like, to your point, far and away the best guy in the field. And uh, I feel like you kind of have to take 
one of Rom or Scotty there at the top. Now, again, there's some game theory to building out these tiers two page, like, you know, avoiding those guys makes some sense. You're obviously instantly unique in terms of winning a competition that's going to have, you know, thousands of people in it. So um, I understand why someone would want to go off the board, but you make the case for Rom, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, your next selection I'm very interested in this week as well. There's a lot of narrative about, hey, we just haven't seen this guy perform super well in majors. I argue that he's played his best at major type events. Who's number two for you? Max Homa, he has the complete game to win on very difficult golf courses. We have seen that with his previous wins as well. Uh, Riviera, a really great example of that. He is a fan favorite, and he's also a favorite going into the U.S. Open at LACC, but that's a lot of pressure for someone. And he could be, I don't even want to say a sneaky underdog because everyone's liking Max this week, but because he hasn't had a lot of success in majors, I think it's a bit surprising for everyone. I'm surprised by it because he has such a solid game to win at major championships. So we're seeing him gain confidence, and he looks like a really great pick this week. Yeah, we've seen the recent form, a predictor of success at PGA Championships. And Max, obviously, you know, top 10 last time out at Quail Hollow place. He's won a couple of times. And again, that's a, a big boy golf contest or, or golf course. So if you can do it there, I can't imagine you can't do it everywhere, too. And those are great fields, too. Those are major-esque fields. Um, we're seeing a lot of young guys nowadays. Uh, distance still matters. But there's, a you know, an older guy still hanging around that can still bombing out there. And he's actually been playing pretty well. Uh, of late as well. Who's your next guy? Adam Scott. And he is another really big favorite. I was doing some research looking around and everyone's liking Adam Scott. And for good reason, he is trending. He's had some really great finishes. And despite him getting a bit older, he is hitting it longer than ever. And like we talked about, length on this golf course is so incredibly important. Another amazing ball striker. You can see a trend. Uh, John Rahm, Max Homa, Adam Scott, they all hit it long and they all hit it really well. Yep, that's a great point. And that will continue here. Uh, this next guy is basically for the last couple of years has just been bombing putts. Uh, the approach game was kind of struggling. You get to a spot where maybe spraying it off the tee didn't matter, but the putter could get white hot and Wyndham Clark would make some noise. All of a sudden, Wyndham Clark is dialed in on approach. And we saw that obviously last time out when he won Wells Fargo at Quail Hollow. Uh, I love this next pick for you. Yeah. Wyndham Clark, I actually grew up playing golf with him in Colorado. He's always been a superstar. And I think everyone was just waiting for him to break through because his game is so solid and he's a long hitter and he just needed that confidence. And so I think getting that first win, getting the monkey off his back, he's now able to see that he can compete with the best guys around. And I think he's going to be carrying a lot of confidence going into the PGA championship. Love it. That's really cool. All right, next, uh, we can use our customizable stat database over at Betsports Golf and search by region of the country. And if you break down guys that have played really well in the Northeast, surprisingly, even though we think of uh, this next guy is a South Carolina, Sea Island, uh, Harbor Town type of guy, he's played really well in his career in the Northeast, is finally getting healthy. Yeah, Harris English. You know, I really leaned on Betsperts here to use the data to come up with this pick. Again, he might not be someone that you think of right away, but when you look at the data through Betsperts, you're like, why isn't everyone picking Harris English? Because it just makes so much sense. Yeah, played really well last time out. It's good to see him finally healthy and playing towards that top level again. Um, your last pick's off the board. Now, when you get into the sixth tier, it's deep right? It's basically the best of the rest. And it's a very, very deep tier. It's a great place to get unique. I think you did that here, uh, but you're definitely staying on brand in terms of uh, distance off the tee. Yeah. With Nikolai, he is a young, really great player and his game is trending. He's made 13 straight um, cuts in a row. He's had some really good uh, top 10 finishes. And again, that long ball hitter. Uh, we're just going to see that all week with these guys. You're, you're basically out of it if you can't have that carry distance and you aren't having shorter clubs into these very difficult greens. And especially when you're dealing with the rough, you know, having a wedge or a nine iron compared to a seven iron is going to be a very big advantage. So I'm feeling quite confident about my lineup. I like it a lot. I'm going to be honest. I think that building with distance is the right way to go. As you mentioned, like we're talking about like postage stamp type greens here, Paige, like really outside of, uh, you know, maybe Pebble that they play regularly. These are really, really small with all these shaved runoffs, 
Um, you know, guys are going to have to scramble. But as you said, if you can give yourself, uh, you know, a wedge in or a nine in where you're able to maybe hold it a little bit easier, you know, you're not going to have to scramble and get yourself up here. Uh, and sometimes just getting there, being able to two putt and take your par is going to be easier than having to rely on getting up and down and take it. So good stuff as always. So uh, remember, find Paige on Twitter at Paige Berenik pagebarenic.com um tell everyone else where they can find all the incredible stuff that you got going there's <laughs> only page there's swag there's all the great stuff yeah you can find me across all socials from instagram twitter facebook youtube snapchat tiktok to my subscription site only page where we do a ton of really great golf instruction behind the scenes and some other really fun stuff i have my podcast playing around Pretty much everything. I'm just going down the list of finding all this stuff. But make sure you guys go enter this contest. I, you are going to fall in love with the Swag Putters. They are so cool, very sought out. They have a crazy fan base. So when you get your Swag Putter, it's going to be you're going to be the coolest one on the golf course. Absolutely love it. So again, don't forget to find the link here in the show notes to join. Again, it will take you 90 seconds to make those picks. Um, don't do Paige. She has a good lineup. Don't dupe her, um, although she might win. So it's definitely a good one to follow. So uh, thanks as always for joining us, Paige. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon.